On today's show, reclaim your true identity and let's go change the world. Robbie Dawkins knew from a young age that he wanted to be a missionary and he's done just that. Now a highly sought after teacher on the powerful presence of God, Robbie is healing and witnessing to the sick and casting out demons in Jesus' name. Robbie is featured in films such as Furious Love, Father of Lights, and Holy Ghost Reborn, all of which focus on the Holy Spirit and the amazing love of God. Robbie is the author of bestsellers like Do What Jesus Did and his latest Identity Thief. Please help me welcome Pastor Robbie Dawkins. Hey Robbie, welcome back. It's good to have you, man. Such a joy. Thanks so much. We've already talked together about this book, and it's out now, isn't it? Yes, sir. And it's called Identity Thief, Exposing Satan's Plan to Steal Your Purpose, Your Passion, and Your Power. Do you mm -hmm. think Satan has a very specific plan that he's pulling off against us? Absolutely. You know, I, I think in the garden, you know, he saw Adam and Eve. They were given dominion authority over the earth. They were giving rule. And, you know, that demonstrates the benevolence of God. Mm -hmm. Here he wants his creation to, it, to share in who he is. And so he gives them dominion. He gives them rule over the earth. And then, you know, here's his whole earth. You take, take, take rule over it. I mean, that's just his generosity. Satan comes in immediately and, and through unbelief steals it. Did God say, and that's always the question, <laughs> did God say, notice that, you know, in, in Luke 4, you know, with Jesus in the wilderness, if you are... Even yeah. at the cross, if you are, it's always that unbelief that he's trying to bring. Did God say, is that real? Is that true? And he comes in with that. And, and, and when those who were rulers obeyed the one they were supposed to rule over, they were supposed to rule over everything that scurried on the ground, and that's the image he took. When they obeyed him rather than ruling over him, I believe there was a power transfer. Yeah. All the power and authority they had to rule the planet was then handed over to him. So Satan, I don't believe, is empowered by God at all. He's empowered by our unbelief, and he stays empowered by our unbelief. And he's operating in our identity. He's operating under our, just like a... Like so a, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, and you renew your mind yes. with the Word of God, so you know who you are, you're walking in the authority that Jesus has because he's now in us. Right. He's the anointed one. He's in us. So we have literally all nine gifts of the Spirit are within us. That's Holy it. Spirit's guiding us. Does the enemy really have any power then? He can try. He can and try. he could try. He tries to reclaim territory. Yes. You know, I worked in a in a city where there was a lot of gangs and a lot of a lot of crime and, and there were turf wars. And, and it could be a turf war. And that's really what happens with healing. You know, because yeah. this body comes from the earth. It comes so so when Satan is bring even some people that have had sickness or had symptoms, they get healed and then all of a sudden the symptoms start to come mm -hmm. back. Satan's mm -hmm. fighting for territory. Yeah. And we have to stop and say, no, 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 this is God's territory. You know, that's so true. There's been a couple of times in my life in ministry where I begin to have symptoms. And, uh, you know, we've always loved ministering to people in the area of healing. And, and the symptoms were so strong, it didn't go away. And we'd speak over them. We prayed over them. And I, I love doctors and hospitals. I have no problem oh, with absolutely. them. Absolutely. God and gave so them that wisdom. And so I finally went and had a checkup. Sure. I'll never forget the first time it happened. They put me through a battery of tests. And the guy comes in, and he says, uh, Mr. Fontaine, yeah. He said, we can't find a problem with you. And something inside of me leaped, and it's like Holy Spirit brought this verse to my mind, lying, signs, and wonders. Mm. That the enemy somehow had gotten me to a place of maybe thinking this, mm. I'd allowed this thing in, yeah. and it wasn't even real. Yeah. But I'll bet you if I wouldn't have quickly dealt with that, that this thinking, well, I've got the symptoms of this. Yes. And I watch TV, and oh, I've got... You know, a twitch in the right eye could be a really serious uh, tumor in a certain part of your brain. Oh, you know, right, I, <laughs> I he, must have that term. He will literally just harass your brain with this stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, your friend is the reason they didn't call you and invite you is because they don't welcome you anymore. And he begins yeah. to destroy your friendships. You know, your wife or your husband used to be, you know, more loving and more caring for something. And he just literally, your brain is being bombarded by lying the thoughts, battlefields, the lying mind. wonders. Yeah, and you can't lying give wonders. Into them. I like that. <laughs> it's so true, and and it's it's a constant bombardment. It's a daily. Yeah 
fight. It's, it's, you know, Paul, you know, stops and is talking about, you know, this battling daily. I die daily to this, to this thinking that the enemy tries to give to me. I die daily to these desires that I know are not truly my desires, but he's trying to put into me. That, that death is not to the point of him saying, you know, woe is me. I have, but no, I have to stop and say, that's not me. That's that right. dead man. Yep. You know, that's that man that died, and yes. that's done. And, and, and that is a, such a significant part of our identity. So once we understand who we are, all of a sudden the enemy says, you're a failure, you're a loser, how did you do this? What do you? All of a sudden we realize Christ says, I'm more than a conqueror. Right. I've made you. And we even stop. I, sometimes I love getting words of knowledge. But it, it, I've had the even pastors say, well, you know, you're teaching our people to go pray for anybody who's sick. But I'm telling them if God doesn't tell them to go pray for that person, they better not do it. If they don't have a word of knowledge to do it, they better not do it. And I'm stopping to say, you're, but you're teaching them slavery mentality. Jesus said, I've made you heirs. I, I love it when my kids take out the trash and I haven't asked them to. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like it when they just yeah. see the need and they want yeah. to meet the need. Mm -hmm. And if we go from an heir mentality... To where I don't have to have a word to go pray for that person. Jesus said, heal the sick. Who qualifies? Yep. Everybody who needs healing. Already commanded. And so it's just, it's just acting on that. But the identity thief tries to come in and say, well, wait a minute. Did you get that prompting? Did you get... You're not taking legal action here because you didn't get a directive. That's trying to push us back into that slavery mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, and we realize, though, that, that the shaping of our mind through the Word of God, through the relationship with the Word of God, shapes us into that place of understanding who we really are as heirs. He's made us yeah. heirs with Him. So true. You know, I've had people, you know, as I was growing in, in kind of the, the denomination in, that we grew up in, mm -hmm. they would often say this term. They would say, the gifts of the Spirit are as the Spirit wills. Now, I don't know if they meant this, but to me as a young man, what it began to say to me was, Holy Spirit decides whether or not a gift is going to be in operation. Or for those who aren't in a Pentecostal background, that the Holy Spirit would flow through you and do a miracle, whether it's a word, a healing. And as I begin to, you know, go into ministry and minister to people, I found that Holy Spirit always wants to flow God through us. God is never withholding. But what I loved about understanding the different ways, like we in the charismatic Pentecostal, we call them the nine gifts of the Spirit. And, yes. and in other denominations like Baptists and others, they wouldn't see them the exact same, mm -hmm. but they believe in the move of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that when I go and I decide, I'm going to go talk to that person, I'm gonna be, that if I'm sensitive to Holy Spirit, it might be a gifts of healings, it mm -hmm. might be a word of knowledge, it might be a word of wisdom, but Holy Spirit is even going to show me how to say it. Open your mouth, He'll fill it. So I like what you're saying. Don't sit around waiting for this massive nudge from God. I mean, what's He got to do? Drop kick you to the goalposts of life. I mean, everywhere you go. Right. And even if when you do go begin to talk to somebody, I've gone and as I'm going to go, I just I want to go talk to this person and minister to this person and then get a real pushback. And so instead of just trying to slam dunk it, I'll just be very loving, very wise and let the seeds of what I'm saying get planted. Maybe someone else will harvest it, but I'm always going to go minister to that person about Christ. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. And with each opportunity, you know, Sometimes we can get excited too about you know praying for somebody, seeing them healed. I always encourage people take it that step further. Yes. You know, like I, I was just yesterday, there was a guy that was uh, at the pool uh, stand at the hotel, and it, I went down. And I was like, oh man, here's an opportunity to get in the jacuzzi. Something I love, a jacuzzi. You know. <laughs> and as I'm walking down, I see this guy cl clenching his shoulder, and and I, I asked him, I said, hey, are you in pain? And he said, yes. And I said, you know, Jesus can heal you. And he goes, no, because I don't believe. And I stopped and I said, well, that's why I want to pray for you, so that you will believe. Right. You know, because if he hasn't had that experience, then how can he? Right. And so I said, can, can I pray for you? And it was a little bit of back and forth. He goes, yeah, okay, you can pray. He goes, but, but I don't want you to waste your breath. And I said, trust me, it won't be a waste. I said, now Jesus is about to heal you right now so that you'll know how much he loves you and cares about you and wants a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for a lot of people that sounds scary, but that's taking a risk. And we, we say phrases like, faith is spelled R-A-S-K. Right, right. Well, well, we just think praying for the person is risk. I encourage people, put something out there yeah. to be yeah. worked with. And so I said, he's going to heal you so that you'll know. Prayed for him, and he couldn't lift his shoulder. I mean, he couldn't lift it at all. Prayed for him, and his shoulder goes right up. Like, it <laughs> lifts his... Sometimes I have to pray two or three times for people. Yeah. But all of a sudden, it just goes right up with no problem. And I, he said, there's a little bit of tension. The look on his face, of course, was shocked because he's like, I don't believe. 
And I looked at him, and tears began to well up in his eyes. I prayed again. He had a little bit of tension prayed. The tension left. He was swinging his arm around. And I looked at him, and I said, Now what Jesus just did for your shoulder, he's offering now to do for your entire life. I said, wouldn't you like to have a relationship? He just offered you a relationship with him when he healed your shoulder. He invited you. How would you like to respond to Jesus' invitation? And he, with tears in his eyes, he said, I, I don't know what that looks like, but I would like that. And I said, well, let's pray together. We pray together right there, standing by the jacuzzi. Now, let me tell you something. It was not the persuasion of what I look like in a bathing suit, because that's not very good. <laughs> it had everything to do with the Holy Spirit was there. But you know what? You know when I felt the Holy Spirit? When I stepped up and said, hey, can I pray for your shoulder? Now, we're, see, we're waiting to say, Holy Spirit, if you'll come on me, I'll go do it. Holy Spirit's saying, if you'll go do it, I'll meet you there. Wow. I'll meet you there. Very you know, cool. and it'll, it'll come. It's like, the, it's like the electric door at the grocery store. Right. If you well, don't approach it, it doesn't open. It doesn't Leon. open. We yeah. have to approach it for it to open. I think we're too sedentary as Christians. Those, I think I agree, we want God sir. to speak to us so clearly that, we, that there's just no way. We, we're so afraid of failure. And yeah. we need to get rid of that. Fear of failure is yeah. what keeps us from this. Uh, I've been talking with Robbie Dawkins, and he wrote this book, Identity Thief, and I want to encourage you to pick up a copy. We're just kind of skimming along some of the thoughts, but you need to get it like a workbook into your hand and begin to let God lead you into a miraculous life. I'll be right back with Robbie Dawkins. But see, this is where Jesus says, I came to destroy the works of the evil one. This is how he does it. It's through healing, through words of knowledge. Through, through uh, you know, encouragement, through, through loving the poor, through helping those in need, forgiving the gospel, those who don't have it. This is how he does that. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Welcome back. My guest today is Robbie Dawkins with the book Identity Thief. You know, we were talking in the green room off camera about how many people have a failure in their life. It could be sin, but even if they've prayed and lost somebody, mm -hmm. let's say that they prayed for a family member that passed away. Mm -hmm. They begin to pray and seek God about a bankruptcy that devastated their family. I mean, lost their home and everything. And now when they go to believe God for something, it's like they've backed away from the miraculous because of something that's happened to them. Right. And that's something you talk about in this book. I, I had a friend and he had a horrible thing happen to him and he lost a son. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we get to heaven, we'll figure some of this stuff out. Yeah, yeah. But he just looked at me at, and I, I just gained so much respect for him. He said, Leon, he said, I'm just not going to trade what I know for what I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I thought that's so true. But I think this is a big issue that everybody's, pr I mean, everybody's prayed for things they didn't get. And if you let yeah. that register too deeply in you, uh, rather than just keep growing in faith and growing in the word and, and trying, do you find that stops a lot of people that you're talking to? Absolutely. You know, uh, we were talking in the first thing about the fear of failure holds us back from so much. I'm afraid I'll fail. I'm afraid I'll be wrong. I'm afraid I'll damage the gospel with somebody. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yep, uh, yep. When, when my, mother, my mother had colon cancer and was dying, my mother was a missionary. My mother was a minister, a great teacher, a great preacher, wow. loved people more than anybody I've ever yep. known in my life. Yep. And she was dying in the hospital, colon cancer. We were praying and praying, worshiping. It was, just, it was, it was, it was a painful, heart-wrenching experience. Wow. Right beside her, in the room beside her, was another woman who had the same cancer, had, had been given basically the same amount of time to live, total unbeliever. 
And her sister called and said, would you just come and just pray, please pray for my sister, just for peace. That neither one of them were believers. We stepped over. I told my dad, I said, we need a diversion. Let's go over here. Let's just pray for this lady. Kind of, you know, just get out of the room for a little bit, have a change of scenery. We went over and we prayed for this woman. And all of a sudden, it just was, it just kind of dropped in my spirit. I looked at her and I said, you're being completely healed of cancer right now. I said, a matter of fact, I curse that cancer in Jesus' name. I command every cancer cell to die. And I said, it's disappearing right now. Now, it wasn't like God just apprehended my body and the Holy Spirit took over and it was right, like, right. Oh, and I would, it, was, it was this sense that could have, I could have ignored, but I engaged in it. And all of a sudden she goes, well, that, that would be really incredible, but you know, that's not what the doctor is saying. They came back later. She began to feel things happen. She didn't tell us at the moment. She began to feel a tingling and heat happen. They came back. They, they, they took her back down for an MRI because there were certain fluids and stuff that had shifted and changed. They could tell something had happened. They went down. All the cancer was gone. They released her from the hospital the next day. Leon, that woman came to my mother's funeral. Wow. And she gave her life to Christ at my mother's funeral. Here my mother was the missionary. Here my mother was... See, we can't earn or deserve this thing. No. It's just God's benevolence and goodness. But I could have sat there and been bitter and say, yeah. Lord, why not my mother? Why not? She was the missionary. She was the yeah. second. But here's the thing. This is what I've learned is this. Is that, in my book, was the revenge of God. <laughs> that was the revenge of yeah. God against cancer coming after my mother. Yeah. That was the revenge of God, uh, uh, you know, and cancer. And, we, and my mother wasn't accepting it. My mother yeah. wasn't buying into it. But rather than getting stuck there in that place, but going after. I had an experience in England where we had this uh, guy in my meeting die. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm up and I'm talking. I'm actually talking about this teaching, Identity Thief. And I set the book down, and all of a sudden, this mother jumps up, starts screaming, and my son, my son, my son. And right there, and the guy was, you know, straight on the chair, and his hands were clenched, his face, it looked, I mean, it looked horrible. Purple in the face, you know, uh, it, it looked very, very serious. And I jumped off the stage. It was this, you know, tiny uh, little uh, church, uh, you know, outside of Preston, England. And I jumped off the stage, and, you know, because she was saying, please help my son, please help my and I went over and I put my hand on his chest and, and I felt this demonic presence. And I could see this cloud over him like a demonic presence. I knew it was demonic. And I began to bind the spirit of infirmity and rebuke it, command it to go. It starts getting worse. Man, it's like hand-to-hand -hand combat. But see, this is where Jesus says, I came to destroy the works of the evil one. This is how he does it. It's through healing, through words of knowledge, through, through uh, you know, encouragement, through, through loving the poor, through helping those in need, for giving the gospel to those who don't have it. This is how he does that. And so now here's the thing. I've probably prayed for at least by that time 30 people to be raised from the dead, none of which have been raised from the dead, none of which. And all of a sudden his, his condition gets worse. Turns out there's a medical doctor right behind him checking his pulse, has his finger there checking, he's looking at me and it's like it's dropping. And um, before too long, he ended up writing a report. The doctor ended up writing this report and gave it to me on this. It was amazing. But all of a sudden, we had to put the man on the ground. And we laid him on the ground, and, and the doctor's like, he's, he's, he's going. He's going. His lips turn blue, black. He goes into what they call the death rattle. And then all of a sudden, and he stops. And the mother thought he was having a stroke, and I said, this is no stroke. I thought, I thought it was an epileptic fit, but she right. said, he's never had an epileptic fit before. She said, he has no epilepsy. And then all of a sudden he stopped bringing, breathing and they look at me and they shake his head and they were like, he's dead. And man, I stood up and my heart sank and I thought, this guy died in my meeting. This is terrible. I'm going to be blamed. Be, and this poor man, this poor mother, all these feelings. And all these faces, Leon, of all these other people that I pray for to be raised from the dead, one by one start flashing in front of my eyes. And I get this sinking feeling, this cold feeling starts to come over me. And I'm like, man, I'm such a loser. I've blown it. I'm a failed again. And then all of a sudden I realized, that's not my fear. You see, the spirit of fear, the spirit of sickness manifests with sickness, disease, pain, ailment. The spirit of fear manifests with the feeling of fear. So I begin to feel that feeling of fear and I'm like, you just tipped your hand. You're afraid of what's about to happen. 
And I just, with courage, I just stepped up. I said, no. And I put my hand back on it. The doctor's taking his coat off, getting ready to do CPR. Put my hand back. I said, I command you to come to life in the name of Jesus. The resurrection, the Jesus that raised himself from the dead lives in you, lives in me. I command you to come back to life. Rise up in Jesus' name. Nothing. Still seeing those faces. In the name of Jesus, the mother screaming. I mean, this is a bad situation. 80 people looking around wow. like, oh, this is horrible. And I'm like, no, you will rise in the name of Jesus. You know, it, it, several minutes have passed. And all of a sudden, and I was like, no way. <laughs> no way. It's, and he starts breathing. Leon, he rolls over onto his stomach, pushes himself up. And I'm like, dude, slow down. You just died. I mean, I, don't, I hate to break it to you, but you died, you know? <laughs> He gets up off the floor and he looks up at the crowd and he winks at them and says, what's everybody looking at? Well, his mother started screaming because she said when he had the stroke, he lost his ability to speak. So not only did he come back to life, but he also... So previous, had this pre is not this incident, that he was couldn't previous. speak when he came to church. Yeah, that had happened a year before. That stroke had happened oh, a year man. before. So his speech is restored. He says, and all of a sudden he stands up and, and, and we're looking and we're, I'm, in, I'm in shock, you know, and I, I turned to him and I said, you know, because scripture talks about how that, you know, uh, with uh, Peter and Elijah, they, they laid on the body. I believe there's an impartation of life that occurs. Mm -hmm. And I said, come here. And I pulled him in and I just said, I just release a full impartation of the life of Jesus to you. And just be filled with that. And, and he ended up, I said, now go back to the back. The ambulance wait back there. You go to the hospital. Let them check you out. We want to, we want, you know what's great about going to the doctor is verification. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the testimony to the doctor <laughs> yeah, and yeah. the family that don't believe and things yeah. like that. He went to the hospital and of course they were, they were, they were completely blown away by the fact that he could speak now. Because they were, you know, and they said, we can't find anything wrong with you. And the mother said he died. And they were like, there's no evidence he died. I mean, if somebody dies and comes back, there's, there's no real evidence of no, it. And true. so it was really incredible. And I went the next day. Now, at some point in there, he had torn his rotator cuff. Mm. And they were prepping him for surgery when I went to see him in the hospital the next day. Prayed for him. And his shoulder was completely healed. <laughs> and so the doctors come back puzzled because they have an MRI of his shoulder. And now they, he's like, no, no, look, it's fine. And he was completely healed. You know, and, and the thing of it is, is it, it, it's, it's amazing to me because, you know, even the enemy, the enemy wants to, you, you got to realize there's always opposition. Even with spectacular things, Satan will try to come and try to steal those. Yep. I mean, it, it, you got to realize with Lazarus, when after Lazarus raises from the dead, the religious leaders are trying to figure out how to kill him to stop the testimony. It's true. So we always have to be prepared. The enemy will try to come in and try to rob, steal, kill, destroy, even that. That's the reason why people will give their lives to Christ, and the next day they'll be like, did that really happen? Did that Satan comes immediately to steal the, the word thief. that is sown. That's the identity thief. And so we have to shake that off. We have to say, no, I know what the Lord says. I know what I saw. I know what I experienced. I know what was there and what happened, you know, and, and how God came through for me, how God came through for this person or whatever the case is. And we always have to be prepared because he never stops until we are present with the Father in a way. The enemy is always going to be a pursuit because he wants to stop the power of that Jesus encounter. No wonder it says that fight the good fight of faith. Yes, I, I like saying it this way, fight the good fight to stay in faith, which means acting out and doing things for God. Robbie, this has been awesome. Thank you for being with me today. It's such a joy. Thank you for having me. I want to encourage you, if you've been enjoying our talk today, hardly scratch the surface. Robbie wrote this book, Identity Thief which he begins to unpack his journey, his life story, from where he was to where God is using him in miracles all over the world and training people how to get miracles. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. 
What a great show today with Robbie Dawkins, learning to step out in faith and trust that Holy Spirit will meet you. That is what Spirit Contemporary is all about, learning to hear Holy Spirit in everyday life. You know, Spirit Contemporary, we've been talking about this now because that's what this show is all about, helping believers to become Spirit Contemporary. This is the way Jesus was. Jesus grew in favor with God, which is the spiritual side of our lives, and Jesus grew in favor with man. That's the contemporary side. Jesus always connected with whoever he talked to. It was never just him trying to, without fail, every time Jesus spoke with anyone in any situation from whatever background financially, whether they were a Sadducee or an adulteress or what, it does, he connected with them and they got it. Spirit Contemporary is being able to bring the beautiful gospel of Jesus anywhere in this world, any city, any place, any age group, any condition of that person's life, and you would be contemporary, able to connect with them, and then able to see the Spirit of God do the miraculous in their lives. It is so important for us to get the gospel out in a spirit contemporary way. We'd love to have you be a part of getting it out there. For just a gift of $30 or more, we would love to send you a gift and thank you for becoming a part of this team, but also thank you for taking this message all around the world in multiple languages and more importantly, being communicated in a way that connects with people because when it connects with people, they give their lives to Christ. They get miracles of healing and relationship and finances that just turns them on to God. I want to encourage you right now, go to your phone and become a part of an amazing team, a team taking the gospel message of Jesus around the world in a spirit contemporary way. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. On Monday, Dr. Doug Weiss joins Leon to share what it means to have a servant marriage. You don't become a servant instantly. No. I mean, you're a leader. It takes a while for people to, to grow in a church and become a servant and become a leader. Okay? The same with Adam. And see, Adam was not ready for marriage until he was a servant. 